home record gets that beep wrecked. Welcome back to Reddit Chronicles. If you're new here, do consider subscribing to help me grow my channel and feed my cat. Back in 08, I was in my sophomore year of college at a pretty huge art school in San Francisco. I was recently single, 26 female, and definitely trying to mingle with a couple of 20-something dudes in my classes. New singleness also meant I was looking for some new girlfriends to have single ladies night out, instead of being the third wheel around the city. So I get a bit clumsy with this girl in one of my classes, who I'll call Monica, after that 90s brandy song, The Boy Is Mine. A deep cut for you fellow olds. Huh, guess I'm not old enough. Monica is really talented at the same things as me, and we have a similar fashion sense. We even have pretty much the same hair and makeup. We hit it off really well, and started hanging out around the city. A month or so into our new friendship, I disclose to Monica that I have the hots for nerdy glasses guy in our class. I tell her I've been a little shy about saying hi, but wanted to ask him out for a drink. She acts nonchalant about it all. Next day in class, this hoe cannot stop gushing all over nerdy glasses guy and basically clinging herself at him. I'm like, yo, what the F to her? And she's like, what do you mean? All innocent. I probably should have ditched that mess right then, but I was a naive optimist slash idiot. She hooks up with nerdy glasses guy and I'm like, eh, forget about him. Some more time passes and we end up getting some drinks after class again. She asks me this time, who are you into these days? So I tell her, I'm weirdly into no deodorant dude because his musk is kind of manly. This is true, but also a test. I have a feeling she's just a homewrecker looking to step in on every crush on my radar. Lo and behold, this dumbest Monica ends up hooking up with no deodorant dude a week later. I only found out because I actually got the nerve up to flirt with him and ask if he's seeing anyone. He says, Monica and I have a little thing that's new or whatever. I was effing furious under that placid calm acceptance. Meanwhile, another dude in our class and I have become art bros. I'll call him Burning Pisser. I'm not really into Burning Pisser sexually, but we hang out after class and work on art projects together. While shooting the sheet, he tells me his piss has been burning for a couple days and he's probably got the clap. Again. He's a real piece of work and constantly cheated on his girlfriend whenever they'd fight. So he says they got into an argument and he went and effed a real hot mess and now his deke is sick. LOL. Of course, I went ahead and asked Monica out for drinks that very night. I gushed about how Burning Pisser was so hot, and I wanted to date him, and blah blah blah. I really made it sound like I was about to have all his babies. I knew this beach could not resist. Long story short, too late. She starts dating Burning Pisser pretty much immediately, like within days. So not only has she slid into my crush zone, but she's home wrecking things for Burning Pisser's actual girlfriend. Look, he's no saint either, but he didn't go out of his way to steal my dudes. Anyways, time goes on and I cannot believe the drama explosion going on here. I'm getting the play by play from both sides and it was too good. Monica tried to steal him away from his girlfriend one night by moving into his apartment without asking. She arrived with a suitcase of her belongings and started setting up cap in Burning Pisser's place. Seizing the opportunity, he Fs her like crazy, talks her into, uh, yeah. And when he's done, he has her suck his deke. A to M. She tries to get into cuddle mode, but he's like, nope. Burning Pisser takes all her stuff out to his fifth floor balcony and throws it onto the street. Suitcase, clothes, shoes, toothbrush, everything including the clothes she'd just been wearing before they banged. So she's screaming at him, he's throwing all her sheets, and then his girlfriend shows up. She starts punching Monica and pushes her out of the apartment into the hall, naked, and locks the door to fight with Burning Mister next. The story is too good. Monica does the ultimate walk of shame to pick her stuff up off the street and cover her dizzy ass before heading home. Couple days later, Burning Mister relates the story to me then adds that he went to the clinic. Yup, it was gonorrhea in his deke. Monica tried to boo-hoo to me about it, so I just told her, Yeah, I wasn't really into him. I just knew you'd F him if I said so. Hangs up. Not sure if she ever figured out where she got that clap though. Clap is gonorrhea by the way. 
don't Google image it. What a story that was. I considered not doing it because it had a lot of, you know, mature themes, but I thought, nah, this is too good to pass up. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it. What am I kidding? Of course you did. Everyone hates homewreckers. Biological mother tries to cause me emotional turmoil, so I take away what she believes gives her value. Her man. Now, I know what you must be thinking. What kind of Jerry Springer r slash pro revenge story am I getting myself into reading? Well, I promise you it's not a Jerry Springer episode, and it's not what you think. So, a little bit of backstory here. I didn't grow up in the best environment. I've seen slash experienced some crazy things, so of course, I have some wild stories. My biological mother is quite frankly, one of the worst people on the planet. I suffered physical and mental abuse from her. She is addicted to methamphetamine and is a Christian, but with a touch of insanity. She believes that she is a saint, yet she can't get the Bible right. For instance, I was originally supposed to be right-handed, but because of her deluded belief, she thought that was the devil's hand, so she put a sock on my right hand and forced me to write with the left and would hit my right hand with a metal ruler if I tried to use it. I'm sure many of you know that the left hand is actually the devil's hand. Ironic, really. Huh, that's interesting. If any Christians know more about this, feel free to drop something in the comments below. Luckily, the last time I ever saw her was when I was 10. At 16, five years after I had been adopted, she found me on Facebook and I tried to give her a chance, but she barely talked to me and never apologized for anything, so I left it at that. We don't have a relationship. Fast forward some years, I just turned 20 and I'm making my first big move. I moved several states away from the one state I lived my entire life. I always desperately wanted to leave because of the constant reminder that she was only one hour away from me. I went to meet my biological father and his side of the family and agreed to work with him. They are amazing people. I got to live in a big city, have a cool, trendy but very dangerous job and party with the rich people on weeknights. I was living it up. My dad stood back, let me have fun, and made sure I was safe, all while posting me on his social media doing events and showcasing the product I made that he helped me design. You know, being a proud father at the fact that I was interested in his profession, and with his help, actually made a successful product. My biological mother was on his social media and saw it all. After almost a year of it, I guess she finally lost it. I had no idea she knew where I was or what I was doing because I didn't have her on any of my social media, but all that changed. She found my Instagram and sent me a private message. What I would endure was enough to send me off to the rails. The first message I got was telling me about how much of an ungrateful beach I was, that I ruined her life, and that she should have killed me when she had the chance, and that I asked for slash deserved everything that was done to me in her care. I, of course, defended myself, telling her that she doesn't know a damn thing about me, and that she couldn't tell me what I was or wasn't, and that she was no mother of mine. Here comes the disturbing part. She accused me of sleeping with my own father. I was disgusted, and I actually felt sick to my stomach having to read something that messed up. And that is when the anger really took over. She never spent a day in prison for the crimes she committed against me. Every time she got arrested, she'd rat on her dope cook, which resulted in her getting released, and I was out for revenge. I wanted to take what gave her value, and I know this woman better than anyone. She believes that what gives her value is having a man, and I took him from her. Yes, I know that sounds bad, but trust me, it's not what you think. Let me explain. Because she messaged me on Instagram, I obviously had access to hers. Mine was private, just in case she decided to try to re-enter my life. Hers, on the other hand, was wide open, and I could do all the snooping I wanted. And that I did. I no longer had Facebook, but my dad mentioned that he had it. So, I did the obvious, get on his account to see if they were friends. They were. More snooping. I found out a few things. One, she had a boyfriend that she flaunted. And two, he has three beautiful little blonde-haired, blue-eyed girls. They were all living in my deceased grandfather's house. Now, I couldn't remember the address, so I went to Google Street View, typed in the town, and looked at every church there until I came across the one I knew all too well, directly across the street from my grandpa's house. The Street View blurred the address on his mailbox, but it didn't blur the churches, so I was able to figure it out. And this is where my plan sets in motion. 
Wow, this girl really puts the pro in pro revenge. I convinced my dad to pretend to be an uncle that was worried about my mental health, and of course, worried about the safety of those three beautiful little girls, which I did truly worry about. If she could do the things she did to me, her own daughter, who knows what she was doing to those three girls that weren't hers. I had him call the CPS department that handled my case. Surprisingly, after 10 years, they still remembered me, but more importantly, they remembered my biological mother. I listened in and whispered in my dad's ear the entire time. I had him play the uncle because I was afraid that if it was me and my dad against her, they would suspect collusion. So worried uncle was the perfect third party. We told them everything, every disgusting message she sent me and I could hear them typing it all into the computer. We also made sure that they knew that I went through a closed adoption and that I get to decide whether or not I'd like a relationship with her, that I do not want that. So she was not only breaking the law by contacting me, but she was also doing it in a harassing manner. After the long talk about the messages, the lady asked my uncle if there was anything else she should know about, and this is where I took her man. I made sure my dad told them my grandfather's address, her boyfriend's name, and that he has his three little girls living there with her. We voiced our concerns about the safety of those children, stating she abused her own daughter to the point that the state had no choice but to take her to ensure the little girl's survival and that she isn't allowed to be around children. To which the CPS lady responded, you're right, she's not allowed to be around children. We will be out to that location as soon as possible. The next day, all the photos of her boyfriend and his three little girls were deleted from all of her social media accounts. I spent 11 years in the system, so I didn't have to be there to know what happened. But just in case you don't, I'll tell you how it went. A social worker showed up to the house, asked to speak to the father, to which they then informed him that his children were at risk with living with my bio mom, that she's not allowed to live with children, and that if he didn't vacate his children from the property immediately, they would be forced to take them into protective custody. He, like any good father would, left that day with his children. The good news, she has not contacted me since, and the best part about that is that I know she knows that I'm the one that effed it up for her. I took what gave her value, and there's not a damn thing she can do about it. Edit, I would like to thank everyone for their support and kind words. At first, I wasn't sure if this was worth posting, but I'm glad I did. Yeah, not what you think is right. The impression I got from a young woman quote unquote taking her biological mother's man, well, yeah. Anyway, I'm glad it's a happy ending. Except, you know, for the abusive mom, who should have been in prison in the first place. If you like more where that came from, simply click on one of these boxes right here. And if you liked the video, I assume you did since you're still here, do consider dropping a like and a subscribe to help me feed my channel and grow my cat. I'll see you in the next episode of Reddit Chronicles.